In this video, a student pilot gets left alone when his instructor passes out, a pilot falls asleep while flying solo, and 370 passengers get trapped above the clouds. Watch and listen to the best air traffic control conversations from my previous air traffic control episodes. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Student pilot Max Sylvester had not spent more than 10 minutes in control of an aircraft during his first two flying lessons, and during his third, his instructor, who had so far watched his every move, became unconscious, leaving Max alone in the cockpit. At 4 p.m. on the 31st of August 2019, at Jandakot Airport in Western Australia, Max settled into the two-seater Cessna 152 for his third lesson overall and the first in the Cessna 152. As they cruised at 3,500 feet, he noticed his instructor Rob was staring out of the window into the sky. Max assumed he'd seen something, but there was nothing there. The instructor began shaking and it was clear that something was wrong. He was having a seizure. Without flying experience or an instructor, Max was left alone to deal with the emergency and he had his wife and three children waiting on the ground. This is the conversation between Max and air traffic control. Emergency, emergency, emergency. This is Tango Foxtrot Romeo. Can you hear me? Tango Foxtrot Romeo, Jandicott Tower. I can hear you. What's the problem? I can't hear you very well. Can you hear me? Do you know? Do you have a transponder on board? I can't hear you very well. I'm going to decrease the um, decrease my engine so I can hear you a little bit better. Tango Foxtrot Romeo, do you know what your altitude is? Can you hear me? Romeo, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Tango Foxtrot Romeo, do you know where your transponder is? Tango Foxtrot Romeo, are you familiar with how to operate the airplane? Very, very light. This is my first um, lesson. Structure at the moment, are they unconscious? He's leaning over my shoulder. I'm trying to keep him up, but he keeps falling down. Just on the aircraft. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that the wings stay level and that you keep a consistent speed and consistent altitude. At the, at the moment, my altitude is 1,900. Take a shot, Romeo. Roger. Do you have a? Uh, do you know if you have a transponder on board? Do you know what that is? Copy that, I do. Okay, do you know what it's reading right now? What's that, sorry? What's the numbers on the transponder? Can you repeat that, please? What are the numbers on the transponder reading? The reading is nose down. <laughs> Tango Foxtrot Romeo, uh, can you see any obvious landmarks? For example, the Quinana Freeway, can you see that out the window at all? Yes, I can see Pumpton Lake. Tango Foxtrot Romeo, good. I think we have you identified at the moment. Can you see the Jandicott Airport at all? I've activated the rotating light on top of the tower. At the moment, it looks like you're heading north, and it should be, if you look uh, directly ahead, and then to the right just a little bit, you should see the runways there. Can you see that? Um, yep, I'm just going over Thompson Lake. We were originally meant to be going through the boat shed and then coming through, but if you what one way do you want me to land on? Thank you, Fox Shot Romeo. We will uh, try to uh, get you in for runway 30. You can come straight to the airport right now if you like, come direct to Janicott. Copy that. Do you want me to wash some of this speed off? Because currently I'm at 2,600. Uh, and my airspeed is 1,110. Uh, 1, Tango Foxtrot Romeo, uh, we didn't copy that. We're just trying to visually identify you at the moment. Can you make a very gentle right turn for me and that'll help us identify who you are? Copy that. Doing a right turn now. Tango Foxtrot Romeo, thanks. We can see you out the window, so we're tracking where you are at the moment. You're doing a really great job. I know this is very stressful, but you're doing an amazing job and we're going to help you get down to the ground, okay? If I do a flyover first, please. As well, uh, sorry, to um, your company, just to make them aware of everything that's happening so they can help out um, as needed shortly. Uh, so if you want to just uh, straight away, um, we'll just overfly to the field and get you nice and comfortable with that. So you can just overfly direct Jandicott and we'll get you having a look at the runways so that you're familiar with the runway that we're going to get you to land on. 
Copy that, I'll just do a fly around then. Tango Foxtrot Romeo, um, just in front of you and just slightly to the left is the runway we're going to land you on, that's runway 30. So if, if you're able to see it, there's three runways at the airport, there's two that are parallel to each other, there's one single runway that's crossing across both of them. That runway's out to your left right now, that's the runway we're going to land you on. Can you see that? Big 30 on the threshold? Yep, copy that. Yes, that's the one we're going to land you on. Um, so what I want you to do now is make a left 90 degree turn to start flying along that runway and that's going to get you into a nice circle pattern that's going to um, fly you along the runway and then back onto a left turn to sort of start doing a circle over that runway, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you just want me to do a circuit around that runway. That's great. So right now, just straighten up, go nice swings level, nice and calm, and straight up the runway, um, and just fly along the runway so you get an idea of uh, what it feels like to be over flying that runway. Single Foxtrot Romeo, have you landed um, uh, any aircraft before uh, by yourself or with someone else at the controls with you? No, I haven't. Single Foxtrot Romeo, understood. Um, when you're ready, make a left turn, and we're going to start a, a nice square. Um, circuit around that runway, so that'll be your uh, your next leg is a nice 90 degree turn there. Mm -hmm. Team Fox Romeo, can you tell me how your instructor's doing at the moment? How's he, how's he looking? Uh, no, he hasn't woken up. I've just started to lift his head back up just to check to see how he's going, but he's not responding. So we're going to need an ambulance and somebody here ASAP. The airplane, yeah. the instructor, um, we do have an ambulance coming, they're on the way, so they're going to meet you on the ground and they're going to give him the best care that they can. Um, the most important thing, because he's sitting, um, if you can, keep his head upright, um, sort of leaning back against the headrest if there is one, and that'll just keep his airway nice and open for us. Copy that. Okay, he's opening his eyes now. Same box, Romeo, uh, Roger, are you able to uh, communicate with him at all? Sorry, can you repeat that? Tango Foxtrot Romeo, is your instructor communicating at all? No, he's not. Tango Foxtrot Romeo, that's okay. Your your job right now is just keep focusing on that aircraft um, as best you can. Um, secondary to that is just to keep his head upright and his body upright in the seat. Um, but we're going to uh, get you on the ground very soon and get uh, both of you guys uh, on the ground safely. When you're ready, make that left turn. Um, back towards the, the runway again and we'll line you up again and just sort of get your feeling for that. If you want, you can start making a nice gentle descent back towards the runway and um, sort of start lining you up and get a feel for what it feels like to start descending and, and landing towards the runway. Copy that. Thank you, Foxtrot Romeo. Do you know uh, how long have you been airborne? Uh, sorry, do you know uh, how much fuel you might have on board? I'm not too sure on how it works with gallons, but it says uh, I'm just over half. Thank you, Foxtrot Romeo. That's okay. I just had a quick chat uh, actually to your company. They tell me you've got five hours of fuel on board. So you've got, um, I think you've spent about an hour airborne so far, so we've got plenty and plenty of time to do some practice and rehearsal before we get you on the ground, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, so when would you like me to get onto the ground then? I tell you, Fox Romeo, ultimately it's up to you. Um, we want you to be nice and comfortable for your, your attempt at landing. So just what you're doing right now and practicing on the runway is um, uh, is really good. So right now, just in this moment, just get a feel for what it looks like with that runway beneath you. Um, and as we slowly descend you towards the runway, um, when you're happy to make that landing. Yeah, copy that. That crosswind is pretty bad, so I'm just going to get used to the way that the aircraft flies. Because normally I'm flying the 172, so... This one's uh, a lot different. Yeah, they, um, they, they've told us that you, you can fly uh, the 172 um, after a couple of hours, so that's really, really good. Just keep doing what you're doing um, and get the feel for how the 152 feels. Obviously a little bit different, but uh, you're doing really, really well. You're doing an amazing job. Yeah, well, my flight instructor did say that I was the best student he's had. Well, we definitely have a story to tell at the end of this one. I hope they don't think I'm paying for this flight. Sorry to say. So your folks are over. Uh, yeah, no, if, uh, if they make you pay for it, I'll pay for it with my own wallet. Now before we continue, let me show you a game that you'll enjoy if you're watching this video. Today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play vehicle combat game, and it includes what I think you'll enjoy the most, aviation. It's free to download on PC, PlayStation and Xbox, and it's not just aviation. 
There's over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships, both old and modern. I've made videos on it in the past, and when I play, I always get into really intense dogfights, which I can recommend you try. And with the realistic graphics, you really feel immersed in the game. There's a reason why 70 million people play it. It's got something for everyone. For example, arcade mode, realistic mode, and full-on simulator mode. And you don't need any extra hardware. So go play today using my link in the description to get a massive bonus pack with premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of premium if you're a new player or haven't played in 6 months. It's only for a limited time, so don't miss it. Again, link in the description. Thank you, folks, for Army. I just did a little bit more engine power, please. You're dropping a little bit too low there. Yep, that's great. Just a little bit more power. Make sure you're aiming the nose at the threshold. It's the one with the red light and the surf sticking on it. Copy that. That's really good. Keep maintaining the speed. Lower the nose just slightly. Keep the nose coming down just slightly. You want me to land? Yep. Up to you, land it. Nose down towards the threshold, nose down. Looking great, mate, this is perfect. Nose down more, 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 perfect, perfect. Power, little, little bit, power off, power off, power off, power off. Raise the nose gently, raise the nose gently, hold it off, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there, this is perfect. Hold it, hold it, very gently start braking now, gently start braking now, and you're down on the ground, you did it mate, well done, that's amazing, you've done so well, just brake right there on the runway, and we're going to have all the vehicles come out and meet you on the runway, just hold it right there, you've done absolutely an amazing job, well done. Thank you, Foxtrot Romeo. Uh, just stop the, uh, the aircraft there. The uh, vehicles are now going to come out and meet you there. Just, uh, yeah, when you're ready, you can uh, just stop there and uh, engine down to idle. Thank, thank you, Foxtrot Romeo. Congratulations on your first solo. Alright, thank you, Foxtrot Romeo. The, um, the emergency vehicles are now with you. Just stop there, engine to idle, full brakes on, and they're going to come out and help you um, close out the aircraft and get Robertson help. Well done, mate. Catch you later. An hour after his first contact with air traffic control, he had landed the plane. Attempt number 5 would be the one to bring them to the ground. Max was reunited with his family and his instructor was rushed to the hospital. It turned out he had a brain tumor and Max had saved both of their lives. Only a week or two later, Max was back in the cockpit working towards his commercial license. The instructor said he was lucky to be flying with Max on that Saturday in August. Next up. 17-year-old student pilot Maggie Taraska had just taken off from Beverly Regional Airport in Massachusetts for her first solo cross-country flight headed for Portland, Maine. But just a few minutes into the flight, her plane, a Piper PA-28, lost its right main wheel. A pilot on the ground saw the wheel fall off the plane and contacted air traffic control, who then contacted Maggie. This is the conversation between Maggie Taraska and air traffic control on September 9, 2018. Warrior 2496 X ray, runway 9, full length, cleared for takeoff. Warrior 2496 X ray. Cleared for takeoff, X ray. Uh, Tyler, uh, that warrior just a part of the right main gear strut and wheel just fell off the airplane. Roger. Warrior 2496 X ray, Tower. Yeah. Okay, Warrior 2496 X ray, the uh, Waco just said that your right main is now missing from the airplane. It is, it's fallen off the airplane. Say your intentions. Can I circle back to land? Warrior 906 X ray affirmative. Um, are you a solo, ma'am? I'm a student pilot solo, yeah. Okay, just, it's, it'll be okay. Just, um, Go ahead and uh, circle the airport for now. Make a right turn to circle. We're going to get some people out to help you, okay? okay. So just a pattern altitude, 1,100, and you can make a right turn out, okay? Okay. Where you're not six x ray, just circle. We're going to get some people out to help you. Everything will be okay. Okay. Okay, 96 x we have one of the instructors up here, uh, Greg. He just wants to make sure how you're doing. Okay. Hey, Maggie, this is Greg. Um, how are you doing? 
Um, <laughs> good as it gets, I guess. Yeah, listen, it's going to be okay. So um, you got plenty of fuel. Um, you got the aircraft under control. So uh, you're just going to continue circling. John's uh, John's going to be here shortly, and we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you updated. But we'll we'll work it out. All right. Four nine and six X-ray won't be much longer. Uh, you're doing a really good job. We do have the uh, two instructors up here, so we'll be helping you here shortly. All right. All right. Maggie, this is John. How you doing? I'm okay. Okay, you're doing a great job flying the airplane. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. They're uh, going to stage the equipment uh, just in case anything's needed there, but we're just going to wait. We're going to take our time here. we got plenty of time. you got plenty of fuel. we got plenty of daylight. So um, just try to relax, and you always heard me say go back to basics. So we're going to work the basics here as much as possible, okay? All right. So, Maggie, it's John again. They just did a final sweep of the runway to make sure there's nothing out there that's going to cause any problems. Um, I can see a tiny uh, at altitude lining up the runway. So, why don't you just continue down like you normally do? Um, what I'm thinking is just have you fly down the length of nine like you're doing right now, and then when you're comfortable, I'm gonna have you turn and um, to the left and enter a left downwind on zero nine. Would that work for you? Yeah, that works. Okay, and uh, I'll tell you, um, I'm going to keep an eye on you and maybe suggest when you might want to start to turn uh, crosswind and downwind. We're going to do this just like we did. I know it's hard to say this, but treat it like as much as like a normal landing as you can. Um, so the power settings we've always done, the pitch for the airspeed, keep everything as normal as you can. All right. So, Maggie, the other thing is... is um, We've looked at the part. We pulled that off the run. We've looked at it. Bill Eason's looked at it. Um, Greg and I have looked at the airplane through binoculars, so it's your right wheel that's missing. So as you end, the plus side here is you get a little bit of a left crosswind. So if you use your normal left wing crosswind correction, that means the left side will touch down first, and you're just going to ease the right side down. It's going to try to pull to the right, so be prepared to use left, as much left rudder and left brake as you have to to try to keep it on the center line. All right. Okay, Maggie, we'll let's uh, do a left crosswind turn, and you're going to be flying approximately a heading of uh, 360. All right, uh, left crosswind 360. So, Maggie, you're in a better position than I am to call when you want to turn left downwind, but give yourself uh, plenty of room. You don't want to cut the base too tight. So as you turn downwind, make sure like the left wing tip, just the left wing tip is just touching the runway. That should give you uh, sufficient space. You know, like I said, as much as normal as possible. All right. Looks real good, Maggie. Uh, you get enough spacing out there? Um, I think so, yeah. We're not going to rush everything. This is going to be perfectly normal. If, if something looks wrong, I'll tell you to do a go around, but we're going to do a perfectly normal landing here. All right. Um, should I drop the flaps now? Yeah, I want you to reduce to about 2,000, 2,100 RPM, and under the white arc, drop the flaps and trim it for about 80. All right. Okay, Maggie, let me know when you're comfortable and you're trimmed up. Um, I think I'm good right now. Okay, so just like we've done it a lot of hundreds of hundreds of times before, just kind of look back over the left wing. You want to be about a 45 degree angle from nine, and then um, bring the power back. I'm gonna say about 1700 because there's not a lot of wind here, and just a normal turn to base. You're gonna be doing a left turn to a heading of uh, 180 for that base leg. Hey, I'm turning now. And everything is looking good, Maggie. Hang in there. Keep just keep doing what you've been trained to do. Hey, I'm gonna drop the second notch flap. Okay, second notch of flaps and trim for about 75. All right. Okay, Maggie, is your turning final? What, do you feel high or do you feel low? Um, I feel high. Okay, let's reduce the power. Why don't you bring it back to about 1,300, 1,400? Okay, so I'm 40. And about 70 knots. 75 initially. So, Maggie, when you're comfortable, go to full flaps. All right, I'm there now, sorry. That's okay. You're doing a great job. Just remember that zero nine is your aiming point. Very light winds, Maggie. Very uh, light left crosswind. So that's, that's all to your advantage.
You're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a perfect job, Maggie. Just treat it like a normal landing. It's going to try to pull to the right. So when that when that, that left main touches down, our right main touches down. Up, Maggie, you got a whole bunch of people clapping for you up here. So just make sure you shut the mags off, shut the master off, and get out of the aircraft and away from it as clear as you can. Great work, thank you. Great job, Maggie. Excellent job. With assistance from air traffic control and her instructor John, Maggie managed to land the plane safely with no injuries. Without its right wheel, the Piper was pulled off into the grass beside the runway, but it could have gone much worse. Just five days after the incident, she was back in the cockpit, flying with her instructor John Singleton. And next up, a regular flight took a dramatic turn when the plane suddenly nosedived, disorienting everyone on board. One passenger, Darren Harrison, saw what was happening. The pilot had become incapacitated. Without any flying experience, Harrison climbed into the front seat and took the controls. At 10 a.m. on May 10, 2022, a Cessna 208 Caravan flying at 12,000 feet from Marsh Harbor Airport in the Bahamas to Florida's Fort Pierce International Airport contacted Fort Pierce Tower, alerting them to the unfolding emergency. One pilot and two passengers were on board. To the tower's surprise, it wasn't the pilot on the radio, but a passenger who had been forced to take the controls. Harrison had struggled for 20 minutes just to get the radio working, and he just wanted to get home to his pregnant wife. This is the conversation between Darren Harrison and air traffic control. Traffic, in triple three, Lima Delta, is that it? Airman 333, Lima Delta, Fort Pierce Tower. I've got a serious situation here about pilot and John. I have no idea how to fly the airplane, but I'm in 9100. Number 333, Lima Delta, roger, what's your position? I have no idea. I see the coast of Florida in front of me, and I have no idea. Number 333, Lima Delta, do you know how to uh, operate the transponder? Can you squawk 7700? Yeah, uh, stand by with me too. Repeat that frequency to swap. Number 333 Lima Delta, Fable input 7700 into your transponder. 7700, yes. November uh, 3 Lima Delta, can you uh, say again what the uh, situation is? Pilot is in Number 3 Lima Delta, that came in a little broken. Uh, what, what was the situation with the pilot? He is incoherent, he is out. Number three, Lima Delta, Roger, uh, try to hold the wings level and see if you can start uh, descending for me. Uh, push forward on the uh, controls and uh, descend at a very slow rate. Yeah, I'm descending right now at 550 feet a minute, passing 8640. Number three, three, Lima Delta, Roger, and uh, continue the descent and uh, try to level off at 5,000 feet. And for what heading do I need to be on? Give me a compass heading because I have no controls. Electronic roll. Remember, 3 Lima Delta, maintain wings level and uh, just try to follow the coast, either north or southbound. We're trying to locate you. 10-4, uh, passing 8600. Remember, 3 Lima Delta, Fable, uh, hit the ident button on the uh, transponder. What's one is it? Number 3 Lima Delta on the transponder, if there's a button that says IDENT, hit the uh, IDENT button for me. I, uh, I what? IDENT, I, I, N, B, E, N, T. I'm looking for it, I can't find it. Number uh, 3 Lima Delta, if able, uh, I have a frequency for you to put into your radio, it's 1. 32.15132.15, that's Palm Beach Approach, they may have a better idea of uh, where you're at. November 3, Lima Delta, did you copy the frequency 132.15? No. 
Number three, Lima Delta, no problem. Just uh, c continue to stay wing wings level, maintain 5,000, and uh, follow the coast, and we're going to try to find you here on the radar. Okay, sir, You guys located me yet? I can't even get my nav screen to turn on it. It has all the uh, information on it. You guys got any ideas on that? Number uh, three, Lima Delta, uh, Palm Beach is a, uh, he's uh, instructing me that you're uh, about 20 miles east of Boca Raton. Just continue northbound over the beach and we'll try to uh, get you some more further instructions. Continue maintain 5,000 northbound over the beach. Number three, Lima Delta, Roger, if you can, uh, on your cell phone, give that phone number a call. They're going to get you in touch with somebody that can help you maneuver that plane. And number three, Lemon Delta, while you're making that call, just remain on this frequency and uh, we're going to continue to try to get you some more help. Is the pilot unconscious? Number three, Lemon Delta, can you tell me how many personnel are on the, uh, on the plane with you? Number three, Lima Delta, Palm Beach Approach is going to talk to you. They're going to direct you to the Palm Beach Airport. You should hear them on this frequency momentarily. Number three, 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 Lima Delta, four Pierce Tower. Number three, 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 Lima Delta, four Pierce Tower. You sound frequency. Here, Harrison dropped below radio coverage for Fort Pierce Tower, so controllers there could no longer hear him. Palm Beach Airport Air Traffic Controller and Flight Instructor Robert Morgan took over and contacted Harrison. I appreciate Ada, everybody's patience here. Just hang with me. It's going to be a couple minutes. Tower 21, holding short 10 left. I'll be standing by for landing. Top 21, Roger Aircraft, about 7 miles northwest now. Looks like they're getting some flight controls before they come in. Very good, thank you. Palm Beach Tower, Trevor 5. Chopper 5, Palm Beach Tower. Chopper 5, Jet Aviation needs departure to um, operate south of the airfield. Chopper 5, unable, hold your position on the ramp. It's going to be a few minutes. Chopper 5. Uh, tower, Chopper 5, if you have a moment, let's get across the other way. Uh, Chopper 5, emergency inbound, hold your position. Chopper 5, Roger. Top 21, uh, landing aircraft on about a mile and a half, final caravan. I do say thank you, request on uh, 10 left after landing behind fire rescue. Top 21, you may want to go northbound on the side a little bit more, a beam taxiway away uh, more over towards the uh, canal if you can, uh, just give them a little bit of room. Black that northbound. Is everybody holding now? Yes, everybody's holding. Top 21, proceed down runway 10 left. 21 down 10 left, crossing 14. American 1845, you can make the left turn there, hold short of 10 left. It's going to be a couple minutes. Uh, you just witnessed a couple passengers land that plane. Not a problem. Uh, go ahead and uh, continue. We'll hold short 10 left, American 1845. Man, they did a great job. Passengers landed the airplane? That's correct. Oh my gosh, that yeah, no. no, great job. No flying experience. We got a controller that worked them down, that's a flight instructor. That's it. Together, they got the Cessna to touch down on the runway around 12.30 p.m. at Palm Beach Airport. No passenger was injured. The original pilot, Kenneth Allen, was rushed to the hospital where they found that he had suffered a tear in his heart's aorta. Six days later, after surgery, he was released from the hospital. Today he has made a full recovery and is back to flying, a miracle after another. And next up, a Cessna pilot flying on his own from Cairns to Redcliffe in Australia fell asleep and overflew his destination by more than 110 kilometers or 68 miles. The pilot was doing a ferry flight in a Cessna 208 caravan when he suddenly stopped responding to air traffic control about his planned descent into Redcliffe. The controller suspected the pilot had become incapacitated and asked another pilot that was just departing Brisbane to intercept the Cessna and try to see what was happening. Listen to the real conversation from the afternoon of July 2nd, 2020. You gotta correct the pilot, gotta correct the pilot, isn't it? Uh, 
Archers, good day, product 425, heading uh, 016, 1500 passing, climbing 4000. Well, 425, good day, identified, climb to uh, 9000. 9000, product 425. Product 425, approach. Okay, product 425. Product 425, we've got an aircraft, a uh, caravan overhead red flight level 110, who's actually landing there, he's come from the cams, we can't raise him. Um, just wondering, have you got time to uh, just propose and have a quick look, or uh, not? Yeah, sure, no problem. Flight of 425, okay, thanks. I'll, um, I'll just get you fairly wide, I think. We're not sure what he's doing, he's at flight level 110, so... Uh, and he's currently now heading towards Woody Point. If you could turn left heading 320, thanks. That's 320, product 425. Product uh, 425, turn left heading 240. Two four zero, product four twenty five. Product four twenty five. Aircraft now just over Woody Point, heading south east. That flight level one one zero report. Uh, if you're sighting. Thanks. We'll go looking. Uh, product four twenty five. Approach. Product four twenty five. I uh, think I've got him sighted. Approach. Product four twenty five. Roger. If you could just um, turn left heading three four zero, product four
Five four twenty five. He's going to call me shortly. I'll just check his endurance and his intentions, and if it's all good, we'll be able to let you uh, get some separation between them. Thank you, sir. I look forward to it. Data Quebec Papa approach. Flight 425, Data Quebec Papa is uh, descending. He's not yet on the frequency. Thanks, I'm watching him on TK. Flight 425. Flight 425. Flight 425, can you switch to 123 decimal zero and attempt to relay to Delta Quebec Papa oxygen, oxygen, oxygen? Okay, stop on. Data Quebec Papa approach. Here, the pilot woke up and re-established communication with air traffic control, but the flight was far from over. Delta Quebec Papa, Delta Quebec Papa, Delta. Ah, Delta Quebec Papa, I got you four to five now. Okay, Delta Quebec Papa, you now with Gold Coast approach. Do you have a remaining endurance time, and how are you feeling? Uh. Delta Quebec Papa, stand by one. I'm feeling uh, fine. And uh, stand by on the estimate. Delta Quebec Papa, I'm going to start turning you back towards land. Turn right heading 240. Right heading 240, Delta Quebec Papa. Flight like 425, maintain flight level 110. Maintaining flight level 110, flight like 425. Approach flight like 425, Delta Quebec Papa, appears to be turning to the right and uh, tracking towards Brisbane. Data Quebec Papa, prefer if you're able to land at the Gold Coast. If I uh, bring you in to the Gold Coast, would you prefer a visual approach or an instrument approach? Um, Delta Quebec Papa, I'd uh, prefer to continue to let you. Delta Quebec Papa, you've been off uh, radio for quite a while and uh, you don't sound that great to us on the radio at the moment, so we'd really prefer if you were to land at the Gold Coast now, especially given your remaining fuel. Uh, Delta Quebec Papa, uh, understood. Um, yes, stand by one. Delta Quebec Papa, we need you to land at an aerodrome that has emergency services, just as a precaution. Gold Coast is the closest, the lights are on. Runway 32 is the uh, current runway. I'm going to turn you to the south now to uh, position you for approach for the Gold Coast. Delta Quebec Papa, understood. Delta Quebec Papa, the Gold Coast airfield is in your 12 o'clock now. Do you have it in sight? Delta Quebec Papa, uh, negative. Delta Quebec Papa, turn right heading at 350 to, towards final, and the tower does have you in sight. Right heading 350, Delta Quebec. And approach flight at 425. Uh, once the exercise is complete, uh, we'd like to just uh, rejoin to Brisbane just for some fuel. Flight 425, understood. Clear direct to Brisbane. Thanks. Would you like us to uh, follow in? Uh, we still have sufficient fuel. Flight up 425 uh, AFM. Sorry, you're with the ground station. Yeah, if you can do that, thanks. Okay. Delta Quebec Park, descend to 2,500. 2,500, Delta Quebec Park. Delta Quebec Park, the tower does have you in sight. The airfield now is your left, 11 o'clock at 1 0 miles. You should see the Pappy soon and you'll be on file in just over one minute. Delta Quebec Park. Delta Quebec Papa, do you have the airfield in sight now? You're left 11 o'clock at 1 0 mile. Delta Quebec Papa, negative. Delta Quebec Papa, the aerodrome beacon is on and there will be uh, fire tender vehicles in front of the tower with flashing lights. Delta Quebec Papa. Delta Quebec Papa, and uh, just hear a few alerts in your aircraft there if you could just check your speed and everything's all good. We're fine, Delta Quebec Papa. Delta Quebec Papa. The aerodrome, you're 12 o'clock at 7 miles. Yeah, I have it in sight now, Delta Quebec Papa. Quebec Papa, resume our navigation, join final runway 32. Alright, now it's final runway 32, Delta Quebec Papa. Quebec Papa, when established on the Pappies, it's cleared visual approach runway 32, report established on the Pappies. Clear visual approach runway 32, Delta Quebec Papa. Delta Quebec Papa, just confirm that you are established on the Pappies. Affirmative, Delta Quebec Papa. Delta Quebec Papa, remain this frequency and if you can commence descent to landing. 
Delta Quebec Papa, run the way down. Delta Quebec Papa, runway 32, clear to land. Oh, clear to land, runway 32, Delta Quebec Papa. Flight up 425, uh, thanks for your help uh, there tonight. Did you just want to wait till he's landed and then I'll give you an approach to return to Brisbane? Thanks, it'll be great, Flight up 425. I'm just watching him going on the left hand side. Flight up 425. Flight up 425, the tower has reported that he has landed and thanks a lot for your help tonight. No problem at all, sir. Together with Flydog 425, a Royal Flying Doctor Service pilot, air traffic control helped the Cessna pilot land safely. The ATSB investigation found that the pilot was likely experiencing fatigue due to inadequate sleep the night before and leading up to the incident. The plane was also flying at 11,000 feet due to icy conditions, but the pilot was only occasionally using the supplied oxygen, which likely led to mild hypoxia and worsened the existing fatigue. This all contributed to the pilot falling asleep. This shows the importance of pilots ensuring they're well rested and healthy, especially when flying on their own. Next up, after a 15-hour non-stop flight from Delhi, India on approach into New York, Air India Flight 101 began encountering multiple system failures. None of the instruments in the Boeing 777-300ER meant to help the pilots land the plane were operational, such as Autoland and the instrument landing system. The weather in New York was poor and in some places the cloud base was as low as 200 feet. They couldn't land somewhere else because the fuel was running out after the long flight from India. With multiple systems failing, low fuel and no visibility, the pilots were responsible for the lives of 370 people on board. This is the real conversation between the pilots and air traffic control on the morning of September 11, 2018. Air India 101, other than both ILSs, both radar altimeters, what other things have failed on the airplane? Uh, basically here we've got a uh, single source uh, radio altimeter, we've got TCAS failure, no auto land, uh, wind shear system, uh, auto speed brake, and the uh, and uh, APU is unserviceable as well. Okay, I didn't understand that one, we'll last one. So TCAT failed, no auto brakes, and uh, right, stand by one second. Air India 101 Heavy, descend to maintain 4000. Descend maintain 4000, Air India 101 Heavy. Okay, Air India 101, uh, so just when you get a chance, give me the people on board and the fuel on board, please. Uh, we have total of 370 and uh, fuel, uh, here, uh, uh, 7,200 uh, kg, Air India 101. 7,200 kilograms, you said? Yeah, for Air India 101. Air India 101, um, okay, so you have one operational navigation radio that you're going to shoot the ILS plus four right at Newark, correct? Uh, yes, it'll be, uh, it'll be in, uh, uh, basically, uh, LNAV, VNAV, uh, approach that I want to, uh, attempt here. Okay, understood. Air India 101 Heavy, I'll give you the, the latest special weather, 1120 Zulu at Newark. Wind 360 at 8, visibility at 2, mist, few clouds at 200, ceiling 400, overcast, temperature 172.17 at Kennedy, altimeter 3012. Uh, to touch a mile and uh, ceiling 200, overcast 400, uh, temperature 17, 301 to Air India 101. Air India 101 Heavy, this is going to maintain 3,000 heading to 9 0. 3,000 heading three, uh, to 9 0, Air India 101. Air India 101, is there anything else that you need uh, from me? Very good, sir, India 101. Thank you for the support. And uh, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. I, I wish there was more I could do for you. Thanks, thanks. Air India 101 Heavy, contact New York Approach 127.3. 173, good, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Air India 101. Now we are coming to Newark. Uh, for, uh, heading is uh, 290, descending 3000. Air India 101. Air India 101, heavy flying 280. Heading 280 and uh, 101. Air India 101, heavy Newark altimeter is 302, pressure 3012. 3012, Air India 101. 
Radio 101 Heavy Approach 12855-2855. Check on heading your day and the speed. 2855, thank you. Approach, uh, good morning, Air India 101, 3000 feet, heading uh, 280, maintain speed 230. Air India 101 Heavy Approach, Roger, Newark Alphimeter 3012, and verify you have information, Kilo. 3012, Kilo Air India 101. Okay, and AMD 101 Heavy, which approach would you like today? Uh, the 4 right, ILS. Okay, very good, expect ILS 4 right. Portal 121, turn right of the 220 vector resequence for an emergency. Right, 220, Portal 121. AMD 101 Heavy, turn right heading 320. Confirm heading 320. AMD 101 Heavy, affirm it. Flight heading 320, speed is your discretion. Heading 320, speed is your discretion. AMD 101. And uh, Air India 101, confirm here for the approach. Air India 101 Heavy, to 10 miles from Dillon, turn right heading 010, meeting 3000 at Gold Stop from Localizer, cleared ILS from Wait 4 right approach. Sir, uh, right heading 010, and uh, 3000 run till established localizer, clear for the approach, Air India 101. Truck 1, while we wait here, uh, nature of emergency is a uh, computer failure. The aircraft type is a uh, Boeing 777 uh, whiskey model. 270 souls on board and 72,000 uh, kilos of fuel. Truck one, guys, thank you. And truck one, uh, correction, the, uh, the uh, alert two has 7,200 kilos, so come put an extra kilo zero on the paper. Gotcha, thank you. Air India 101 Heavy, contact Newark Tower 118.3. 18.3. Uh, good morning, Air India 101, ILS 4 right. 101 Heavy Nurse Tower, good morning, 1025, only 4 right, clear to land. 4 right, clear to land, Air India 101. Air India 101 Heavy, emergency personnel will be standing by. Thank you, Air India 101. Truck 1, the alert 2 is the next to land, they are on a uh, three and a half mile final. Truck 1, copy. 101. Well, to the alert, you got to the meeting the estimate here, zero, expression 3012. I mean, 3012, Here, the captain spotted the runway approach lights at an altitude of just 400 feet, about 1.5 miles away, and noticed they were too high. He quickly manually aligned the 777 with the runway and continued the descent without knowing their precise altitude. In the end, they managed to safely land at Newark. One zero one heavy, do you require any assistance? Negative, thank you very much. Passengers on board didn't realize what the pilots had just gone through. Within 15 minutes, rain started pouring down over Newark Airport, and had they not been on the ground by then, it would have been even more difficult to avoid a disaster. The findings of Air India's investigation into the incident have not been made public, but the pilots have been praised for handling the emergency so well, together with air traffic control. Again, thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video. I think you guys will really enjoy it, so go play War Thunder today for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox by using my link in the description. And claim your bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, in-game currency and more before it's too late. Thanks for watching, watch more air traffic control videos by clicking on the screen, and I'll see you guys in the next one.